you ever think in 2022 that you would be seeing a classic stun deck playing Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer? What is going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery here, and welcome to a deck that I've actually been kind of messing around with on and off for a few months now. And this is, as you saw in the title, classic stun. So make sure that you smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button and let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment down below and also hitting the bell if you don't mind letting me know if you want to see more creative deck profiles like this um, because I enjoyed messing around with this and it's been fun to play old cards like this and people don't know what my shit does and they don't know what cards my deck is playing and they lose because of it. So anyway, with all that out of the way, let's jump into today's video. Um, I also want to say too that this actually comes from the OCG, the idea of it, the main mold of the deck uh, because someone in Japan had taught with a stun deck and uh, yeah spoiler alert we're playing the brave engine so you know in 2022 you kind of have to play the brave engine but it complements the deck really well so anyway without any further ado let's go ahead and dive into the deck profile so we're playing two copies of kaiku the ghost destroyer so um let's just go ahead and, and explain this here so whenever it inflicts battle damage to the opponent you can banish up to two monster cards from their grave so you can hit their enchantress you can hit like if they need a prank kid in grave you can hit the prank kid um, it, it has some niche interactions with cards. Uh, you could substitute this out for maybe something else if you want. I felt that it's still fairly solid and comes up from time to time uh, in in certain matchups. Um, so, and then also it doesn't allow the opponent to banish cards from their graveyard. So your Water Enchantress is still online, even with this card. So really interesting. A lot of people have to look at it to see what it does. It's uh, it's pretty comical. And then this really should be three King Tigers. I thought I had three King Tigers and I don't. We're playing one copy of Thunder King and two King Tigers. Again, if you have three, make this three. This card is pennies on the dollar. So, uh, King Tiger Wang Hu, what it does is that while it's face up on the field, anytime either player normal or, I'm sorry, summons, excuse me, it's not just normal summon, anytime either player summons a monster with 1,400 attack or less, it is automatically destroyed. Now, the last time I looked at rulings for this, uh, which granted was a while ago, it was ruled that this does not start a chain. Um, so, if the opponent summons, like, a Flunderies Robina, this doesn't start a chain, it just immediately triggers and pops. I believe that the Robina would still get the search, but, I mean... That this is this is either way an auto win against Flunder because they're not going to have their monsters on the board. Uh, and then we're playing the one T-King because it's a stun card that really no one's playing in 2022, so I figured it'd be a, a cute little one-of tech. But again, if you've got a third King Tiger, go ahead and play it. Um, just this shuts off Flunder from searching. It makes it an auto win. If the opponent is playing Sword Soul and they synchro into like Chain Ying, you contribute to pop the Chain Ying. Um, so some interesting interactions that it has, but if I heard, if I had a third King Tiger, I would play it just because against pranks, they have to have Lampsies, uh, Flunder is pretty much a free win because if the opponent doesn't have a way to negate it and, and no matter what deck they're playing, this is pretty much just going to be a free win. Sword Soul doesn't really care. Branded doesn't care because, you know, Alubar and all that gets around it. Um, so you can side these out for like Lava Golems and things that you do play in the side. I'm still kind of working on the side, so I don't have a side deck together, but, um, this is like a main go-to card in the deck. And then we're also playing three copies of Fossil Dyna because it's Fossil Dyna. It's just that good. Uh, and like I said, we are playing the Brave Engine of one Griffin Rider and three Water Enchantress. You would think that in something like Stun, you couldn't play a Brave Engine, but yet you can really well. Uh, you know, you do your typical Brave Engine plays where, you know, you can banish a Water Enchantress, get the right, play it, get the Faithful, you get the token, um, you summon, like, say, King Tiger, which will get you the Draco back, add the Griffin Rider all Faithful, ditch Draco back, equip it, bring out Griffin Rider, plus you have all your traps for back row, so you end up having an Omni Negate with Griffin Rider, uh, you have the uh, Interruption, sort of, with King Tiger, which could potentially be an auto win depending on what they're playing, uh, and then you also have a bunch of back row. You know, I like to think that you're essentially playing Eldritch just with more monsters. You know, this is, I feel like, just a different variation on Statue Stun. Even then, Statue Stun could debatably also play the Brave Engine. So along with that, we are playing three copies of Rite of Aramiser because it's the Brave Engine. One copy of Faithful, one copy of Draco Back, and then we're also playing two copies of our Lost Art Promotion Offerings to the Doom. So this targets a face-up, or I think it's any monster. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Target a face-up monster, excuse me. Targets a face-up monster, pops it, and then you skip your next draw phase. Um, 
Somehow, I only have one compulsory evacuation device. I don't know how, <laughs> um, but if you have three compulse, you want to play three compulse. I like this because it's another monster removal, and it's a quick play that you can just use during the opponent's turn. These could be Book of Moons. These could be really whatever it is that you're feeling. Dark Rulers, Ragekis, you know, if, if you want some more, you know, monster poppers during your turn. Um, I like these just because it can be used as an interrupt. You know, you could also use Book of Moon for the same thing. Um, so take that for what you will. If you have three compulse, I would recommend playing three compulse. Um, this is just sort of something that if I want to go to locals, I have a 40 card deck to play with locals because uh, we sold our Flunder deck after that Georgia regional. Uh, and then we're also playing two copies of Moon Mirror Shield. Uh, if you don't know what this does, essentially it just makes any monster equipped with it have 100 more attack than the monster it's battling. So you summon out a Fossil Dyna, you activate the Moon Mirror, it's always going to have 100 more attack. Combine that with Faithful Adventure. Keep in mind, any monster that is equipped with an equip card, if it would be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed. So keep that in mind with Faithful Adventure. So it just makes Moon Mirror Shield all that more better. And then we're also playing three copies of Pot of Extravagance. In a deck like Stun, you want to just get that draw two instead of just the one of six with Prosperity. Um, if you want to try Prosperities, definitely go for it. I sold my Prosperities, so I just don't have them anymore. Um, but I felt that in testing, three Extrav was definitely more helpful than Prosperity. And then we're playing the three copies of Pot of Duality because you want to get through your deck and get your resources as quick as you can. Uh, one Feather Duster. Uh, because you also play two Dogmatica Punishment in this deck, and I don't have Dogmatica Punishments, so if you have Punishments, play Punishments. And if you have Elder Entity Ints, play three copies of that in your extra deck. Um, so, yeah, th that this is a substitute, I, if I remember correctly, for one of those. Um, I thought that there was another card I was playing uh, in place of that, but uh, the card escapes me. So, and then we're playing one copy of Forge Barrel to round off the spells. For the traps, we're playing three copies of Solemn Warning because we're a stun deck. Three copies of Solemn Judgment because we're a stun deck. Three copies of TC Boo because the only monsters of the same type that you play is Kaiku and Water Enchantress, which are both spellcasters, and that never comes up. So, King Tiger is a beast. Griffin Rider is a Wing Beast. The Ride of Aramis or Brave Token is a Fairy. So, you never really have to worry about your monsters um, colliding with each other. Uh, Fossil Dine is a rock, so again, you not really something that you got to worry about. Uh, and then we're playing one Compulse, because we only have one, uh, and then one Ring of Destruction. That was the other thing um, that replaced the second Punishment. So the first Punishment was Feather Duster, second one was Ring. Uh, if you got Punishments, definitely take out Ring and Feather Duster, throw in the two Punishments. I felt that uh, Feather Duster would be a good little tech, just because, you know, if you're going against something back row heavy like you, you want to be able to have an out to that back row. Um, the side deck, it's still something I'm working on, however, um, there is a lot of things that you can run. Uh, I'm really liking Lava Golems in the side deck because you can take out your Wanghus and throw in Lavas because Wanghus aren't going to be good in every matchup. Um, you can also run Winter Cherries if you have the funds, you know, to, uh, play three DPE in your extra deck, because then you can just use Winter Cherries to hit the DPE, and it just fizzles out that whole engine. Uh, that was what the OCG build was originally playing. The OCG build was also originally playing Imperial Order, which obviously is now banned in both TCG and OCG, so it was really a 41 card main deck. Um, you can also, you know, play Anti-Spell instead if you want, or, or something like that. You know, you're, you're playing a stun deck, so you want to lock the opponent out of their plays as quickly as you can. Um, I felt that overall this has been pretty good in testing even with the cards that I don't have. But again, if you have access to those cards, you can play those um, or just go on EDO Pro Dueling Book or something and play it there. The deck was also originally playing Paleozoic Dynamiscus, which is good, but the thing is is that sometimes you don't want to ditch your traps uh, just to use a Dynamiscus to hit a monster. So I ended up just opting for Solemn Warnings in the main deck. Uh, and then having Dynamiscus in the side. Uh, so you could play, you know, three Winter Cherries, three Lavas, three Dynamiscus, a Twin Twister. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can play in the side. Um, and I highly encourage you to test this yourself and see what things you think should be added in or taken out or put in the side. Um, but definitely three Lava and or three Sphere Mode because, you know, if you're going second, going second for stun is very, very tough. And you want to be able to have those outs to their board so that you can build yours and not have to worry about what they have. So guys, that is it for this deck profile. Please, if you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below because, you know, we don't really tap
tackle stun all that often on this channel, and to be able to use new cards like the Brave Engine and combine it with old cards is is a good time, and it's it's a fun way to troll the opponent. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.